So you're looking into buying a new video editing laptop. In this video, I'm going to cover the basics, what you need to know about before buying one. I'm also going to be linking up the best video editing laptops available right now for your specific budget as well, coming up. Welcome back my friends, my name is uh, Sheps Flickian and in this video I'm going to share my advice for buying a laptop for video editing. So I'm going to cover what you should be looking at when buying a video editing laptop if you are on a tighter budget but I will also going to be leaving links for higher mid-range all the way up to higher end if you have a little bit more cash to spend as well. So this video is essentially both for the entry level user but also for the more advanced user that want to accomplish something a little bit more professional like 4k editing with slow motion, higher frame rate, time lapse, that type of stuff that Casey Neistat is known for doing for example or you want to play around with color grading and you want to do lots of effects, animations and transitions, that type of stuff. For that type of stuff you want to make sure that your laptop is equipped with a solid discrete GPU. If I lost you now, don't worry, I'll come back to that later on in this video. If you don't feel like you need to learn all this technical stuff, I made it easy for you guys as well. I've linked up the best available video editing laptops as of making this video. For different budgets, you'll find all those links down in the description, guys. Now, who am I to really talk about this? I've been in the computer scene for many years and I recently bought a new video editing machine to render 4K 60fps content. Now you have to keep in mind that being able to render 4K in 60fps that puts a ton of workload on your computer. The reality is that I'm editing and rendering 4K videos in 60fps on a daily basis. These uh, file sizes guys are huge in size. Can we actually talking beyond Blu-ray bitrates here? As I said I do this on a daily basis and I have a great understanding what you need to look into when buying a computer specifically for this type of stuff. Now if you're sitting there and thinking you have to pay thousands of dollars to edit videos on I'm here to tell you that that is really not the case. Now I need to point out that this video is a little bit more ahead of its time as uh, some of the CPUs I'm recommending aren't 100% out on the market as of making this video. I'm going to update the video description as fast as these models get released on the market. Obviously there's still a bunch of great laptops with solid CPUs available right now that will serve you well for years for video editing that you can find and pick up right now. But I will talk more about that later in this video. Alright so what specifically do you need to know before picking up a laptop for video editing purposes. Video editing software mainly used as the CPU cores to make up each frame and build up the video frame by frame. Each core handles a piece of the work and so if you have a CPU that has more CPU cores, that CPU is then as a result going to render each frame faster. CPU is what you want to pay close attention to, more specifically how many cores and threads that CPU has. Okay so with that said, you want to see CPU that offers as many threads and cores as possible at the highest IPC. IPC stands for instructions per clock, how many things that CPU can do per clock per cycle. But all that is just technical stuff. To keep it neat and simple, I would highly recommend AMD Ryzen 1400, 1600 or if you can afford it, the 1900 or even the 1800. For Intel, make sure to look for latest 8th series Core i5. Core i7 or the Core i9. AMD offers better value in terms of core per dollar as of making this video but Intel on the other hand offers better IPC. So as you guys can see it's kind of like a give or take trade here but here's a rule of thumb. If you mainly are going to focus on video editing or other heavy multi-threaded applications stick with AMD Ryzen otherwise go with Intel. Generally Intel's Core i5 and Core i7 have a small performance boost in games thanks to its higher IPC. We're talking about a few FPS here but it's something you need to know about at least. Furthermore I would also consider getting either the Core i7 processors from Intel or the Core i9 that are about to come out but I would really encourage you guys to stay away from Intel's Core i5 
5 7th generation mainly because the lack of threads and also stay away from Intel's Core i3 processors altogether. Intel's Core i3 processors or the Core i5 from the previous generation, the 7th generation, lacks SMT or hyper threading altogether, which is something that video editing software benefits a lot from. If this is getting too technical now, don't worry guys, have a look at the description. Again, I'll line up the best options for you. Moving into RAM and RAM speed ram and ram speed is important but nothing close as to what the cpu matters if you can find a laptop with 16 gigs of ram that is awesome but 8 gig is definitely enough but don't get anything less than that obviously the gpu matters but again nothing near the role what the cpu plays here if you can try and avoid intel's onboard graphic altogether and stick with either nvidia mx or the gtx here Series or AMD's R series is the way to go here. And talking about different GPUs and video editing, Jace2Sense made a video a little while ago where he tested different GPUs to try and figure out if there were any GPU out there on the market performing any better than the other in terms of video editing and rendering time. So you can look it up if you want. I left a link to that actual video down in the description. But anyways, the takeaway from that video is that it doesn't really matter what GPU you have as long as you have GPU render support. If that also applies to video rendering with lots of color grading and other GPU demanding plugins remains to be tested and I cannot answer to that but Adobe Premiere, DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut and Vegas all recommend either Nvidia or AMD for speeding up your rendering so again avoid Intel altogether for faster rendering. Video memory is also important from a video editing side of view, but usually this is something you don't have to pay too much attention to thanks to the evolution in technology. Regular video memory is not that pricey and you usually get more than enough that you uh, need regardless what laptop you're getting in 2017. What does matter whoever is faster hard drive and if you can afford it go for a hard drive that unlike the regular mechanical one that is built upon spinning disk get something called a solid or a uh, NVMe drive or flash based drive. These drives are a lot faster and are made of flash memory making it a lot more robust and and more able to handle a lot more bumps apart from the mechanical one that is uh, on the other hand very sensitive and can get damaged very easily and uh, yeah that's the fundamental basics to know about when looking into buying a video editing laptop in 2017 i'm going to make several follow-ups to this video so if you are interested in learning more definitely consider subscribing and that's it guys i really hope this video have given you any value whatsoever if it did please let me know let me know what laptop you're interested in getting. Now keep in mind that you don't have to be that expensive again. If you want to be 100% sure that you end up with a solid video editing machine, have a look at the links down in the description for the best video editing laptop out there for your specific budget. Subscribe so that you don't miss out on any tech or gaming related content from my end. My name is Shops Flake and until next time guys, have an awesome day, alright? Bye!